Hey everybody, this is Perch, and um, every now and then in the videos, I slip in some little comment, just some offhanded joke about some aspect of comic history. And you, I mean, usually an embarrassing bad part of comic history. And I, I've started to wonder because I get a lot of mail and I see comments on those, you know, kind of offhanded comments where people are asking me why I uh, would say such things or, or what's the joke there or like they don't get it. And um, they're not jokes. These are actual scenes that happened in comics. Uh, so just recently, I did a video and I made some comment about Jessica Jones and that anal scene. And uh, a lot of people, I got, I got quite a decent amount of mail, including from uh, somebody currently at Marvel, um, asking why I was uh, why I would reference that to a strong female character and all the rest. And it's like that was in the comic. So I thought I would do a little video kind of summarizing some of these jokes that I tell from time to time, these kind of offensive moments in comics. I, I don't know if offensive is the right word, but basically these things that happen in comics that are uh, are, are actual real scenes. And, and we'll put some panels up there. So kind of right off the bat, um, so to speak, uh, this, this Jessica Jones anal thing. So this, this was part of Alias. Now, Alias is a comic. This is uh, Bendis and... Um, uh, Michael Gatos, and there were a bunch of things. I mean, this was a Max title, and Bendis was kind of writing it to, I don't know, um, <laughs> to, he was writing it to shock at times. It showed scenes of, uh, you know, Jessica Jones on the toilet, uh, Jessica Jones uh, as a kid masturbating to Johnny Storm. There's a lot of a lot of things that went on there, including the entire um, the Purple Man storyline, which uh, basically revealed she was. Uh, you know, under his power for, for a very, very long time. Anyway, um, this scene was, she, she basically hooks up with Luke Cage and tries anal with him. And, uh, and, and then the, the artist was, uh, Michael was doing these things where you could have like a really close up of her face during these moments. Um, usually not looking like she's having the best time of it. And, uh, anyway, the, uh, this, this particular scene had her saying, uh, you know, I don't care what he feels like. I just want to feel something. It doesn't matter what. So, so that, that that really happened in the comic. In Alias, you can go look it up. Um, the next one that I get a lot of comments on were uh, was from the Blob eating the Wasp. And in this, this I thought most people knew this, this was a Jeff Loeb, uh, David Finch in Ultimatum. And basically, what happens here is that uh, New York is is flooded. The Magneto reverses the poles and causes kind of havoc, kills off a bunch of characters. Somehow, some way, the Blob uh, gets hold of the Wasp and eats her, like legitimately. Now she may have drowned and was dead, uh, but it shows a scene of him basically biting into her. I think Hawkeye comes across her. A uh, giant man would uh, later grab Blob and bite off his head. And, and eat it and it's kind of revenge but uh, it was it was pretty gross uh, especially with all the work that had been done to kind of build the wasp up as a character in the ultimates felt pretty cheap and i think that's how people thought about ultimatum in general but uh, that that's not a sexual joke the blob was eating the wasp literally cannibalism eating the wasp and that was in ultimatum if you feel like going to check that out um the next one is this is uh, is what again i thought a lot of people knew and this is uh, Kitty Pride using the N-word. So what was that all about? This was in this comic, God Loves, Man Kills, of which there have been uh, this sort of, I, I, there's been a movie, uh, the X-Men 2, if you really cross your eyes and forget about all the nuance, you could say that <laughs> they, were, they were sort of adapting that movie, not really. Um, but basically what happens is uh, Kitty Pride uh, gets into a fight with a student in her dance class who's saying muties. And uh, Stevie Hunter doesn't understand why Kitty is so upset at the use of the word uh, muties because uh, she doesn't know that Kitty is a mutie. And so a uh, mutant uh, Kitty then asks how she would react if the student had used the N-word. But it wasn't, she didn't say the N-word. She, she basically um, just throws it out there. And um, it, it, so there's, yes, it's a real scene in a real comic where uh, that word was just printed out. And, uh, and Claremont was trying to, at the time, kind of really figure out different aspects of uh, the civil rights movement and racism and all the rest. So, I mean, it felt in, in his eyes, I think it was a, it was a way to kind of really put a point on it, but it, 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 <laughs> it just comes across as slightly, slightly, maybe a lot awkward today. Uh, but anyway, that's what that's about. Um, the, uh, the, I did a whole video of this where I reviewed this comic with my kids, uh, but people 
haven't seen it, I don't blame them. There's thousands of videos out there. Um, but the other element is Miss Marvel's magnet, magical pregnancy. So this was where uh, Miss Marvel, that that's the current Captain Marvel, um, she basically kind of fell in love with this uh, this this very just very strange kind of alien entity um, named that that then she gets pregnant. Um, and she doesn't know how she was impregnant. Uh, she's pregnant. She, she doesn't know how this happened, but the child, basically she gives birth and the child then grows into a full man. Uh, this is Marcus and he had basically, um, seduced Mar Captain Marvel, Carol using psychic powers and then impregnated her. And, uh, and she didn't know any of this. So she was, uh, uh they say date raped, but that's not really, there's no, there was no date really. It was just, just, just pretty much brainwashed and raped, gave birth to himself. And then the two of them, um, fall in love and fly off to another dimension. And, uh, the Avengers are all like, Hey, have a good time. You know, they're, it's, it's super, super bizarre, um, where that, 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 that all kind of goes on. Um, but, uh, it, it, there are some very goofy scenes. The Avengers like, this seems strange, but, uh, they're in love and you yeah, have fun out there in space, you kids. And, <laughs> and so nobody's like, ah, she's now dating her child. It's all good. Um, the Carol had a bad run there for a while. Then she came back to earth, joined the X-Men and, and was wrecked by rogue. So it was, it was, a, and then became an alcoholic for, for 15 years. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, to think that this character that Marvel really promotes as a feminist icon has probably the most bizarre backstory. And is problematic the right way to put it? Probably. Anyway, that, that was a, that was an entire thing there as well. So that, yes, that's a real storyline gave birth to her kid. That's what that joke is. Um, then you get into uh, Chuck Austin. And so there are kind of two things he did then during his run on, on X-Men that again, I make jokes about one was this joke about a uh, night crawler becoming a, uh, a Pope. And so this, this one's there, there is this plot basically in the story where night crawler been training to be a priest, but then when he becomes a priest, he starts acting very weird. Um, a bunch of X-Men are crucified and uh, night crawler was not being a priest. Like the Catholic church didn't know anything about it. The church of humanity were brainwashing night crawler thinking he was getting to be a priest. He wasn't. And they wanted to make Nightcrawler the Pope to convince Catholics that the rapture was coming because he was a demon and this would somehow topple the Catholic church and they would be replaced by the church of humanity. It didn't, it didn't make, um, really any sense at all, um, on any front, but he also during his run introduced the idea that mutants can't get AIDS and, or kind of, and angel, Warren Warrington's blood can cure AIDS. So it was a, there, that was a, yeah, <laughs> there was a, AIDS was a, anyway, uh, comics have always been political. Yeah. That's uh that's the, when, when people say that go, Oh yeah, you're right. How about the, uh, mutants can't get AIDS thing. Yeah. You just, that's a good counterpoint to make people very, very confused. Anyway, uh, there, there you have that. Um, similarly, the incest angle with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. This was not in the regular Marvel Universe, it's the Ultimate Universe, part of Ultimates. And it really didn't kind of, it kind of vaguely was hinted at that they were close in the Ultimates 1 and 2 by Mark Miller, but not really. And then in Ultimates 3 by Jeff Loeb, they decide to remove all subtlety and the two are definitely screwing. And this, this led to Ultimatum and a lot of other pieces, but that was a legit storyline Wanda and Pietro were absolutely a couple. So there's that. Another comic that I actually did the reviews of, and you can go check them out, search them. I, I urge you to do this as well, is uh, my jokes about Aunt May being a whore. So the comic I'm referring to there is Trouble. And Trouble was written by Mark Miller. It was part of this, um, uh, crap, what was the name of it? It was the uh, Marvel Bad Idea Contest. Uh, the, the Marvel was in there as well. It was it was just just a set of very forgettable comics. Uh, they've said it's not in continuity. Basically it's set up that Aunt May was very loose at the time and slept around with a lot of people, including, um, Peter's, uh, you know, Peter's dad, uh, basically. And, and that Peter was her son because she got pregnant 
by sleeping around. So anyway, this is, it was, again, good times with old Aunt May. Kind of explains that whole Doc Ock thing. But anyway, those are the jokes I made. The other mail that I got that I thought I would reference is I've mentioned, uh, when I was talking about the awards, I talked about how Will Eisner, um, it's great that he has the awards and Eisner has a massive, uh, you know, body of work that uh, that should be respected in comics and everything else. Um, but what people forget is that, and it's not bad, it's just uh, the spirit, uh, which Eisner did, had some pretty uh, hilarious, uh, hilarious, that's the right word? Uh, anyway, some, some pretty intense stereotypes. Uh, his partner, Ebony White, uh, was uh, drawn kind of in the stereotypical um, piece when he was doing uh, Black Hawks. Um, it was, uh, there was, you know, the World War II flying squadron, the Blackhawks, they were, uh, and, and Blackhawks was selling at the same level as, uh, Superman and other popular titles. It was a very popular title, but at any rate, uh, they would go up against characters like, uh, you know, a Chinese guy named Chop Chop, uh, who was, became the team's mascot and cook. And he would say things like, uh, me take baby date. I mean, just, just, I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'll put a screen, I'll put a shot up on the screen, but anyway, a lot of these comics are pretty insane. If you go back and look at them like, wow, I can't believe they, they printed that, but they absolutely did. Anyway, there you go. Th that's some of the jokes that I've made. There's the explanation. They're not just random ideas out of my head. These are actual storylines. So hope that walk down insane memory lane was fun for you. And, uh, Thanks for listening.